Welcome back. It is May 2022. Fly season in the UK at least is well upon us. And it's at this time of year that most of our sheep keepers are looking to apply some sort of product as a preventative for fly strike. There are various chemical products available. It is worth saying at this point, there are non-chemical means of reducing the risk of fly strike. I'm gonna give a nod to them a bit later on, but given that this is a big enough topic on its own, I'm just going to give an overview of the different chemical means of controlling fly strike and some of the considerations you might make when choosing which product you're going to use, if you are going to use a product, of course. The usual caveat supply with this technical, all of the information I'm going to talk about now is only applicable to the United Kingdom, and it's only applicable as of when I'm making this video, which is the middle of May. 2022. This isn't a plug for any particular product, quite apart from anything that is definitely not allowed on my part. Instead, I'm just going to cover the principles and the differences that set these products apart from each other. That hopefully will set you up to go and have a conversation with your vet as to which product you might want to use this year. For now, let's assume that we have a challenge which we can't control without a chemical input. In the UK, there are three major families of chemicals we use to control flies in sheep. The first is organophosphate dips, for which there is one product currently licensed containing diazinon. The second family is the pyrethroid, and this includes a number of different chemicals such as deltamethrin and cypermethrin. Remember, many of these drugs have multiple brand names which contain the same active ingredient. The final category of drugs we call insect growth regulators, or IGRs, which is slightly less of a mouthful. And in the UK, there is one of these currently licensed in a number of different formulations, and that is called dicyclonel. As I said, we're just going to consider here some of the principles that set these products apart from each other. If you're thinking about making a change, take this away in dialogue with your vet. That's important. They know you, they know your flock. And between you, you can decide what you're going to use. Consideration number one, what else do you need this product to do? Many people are using the same product for flies as they would for lice and ticks. If you are looking to control any of those in tandem with flies, only some of these products do both. An OP or a pyrethroid commonly confers some resistance against some or all of these. In contrast, the IGR dicyclonel is specific to flies, so it's not going to have any activity against lice, mites, or ticks. Now, there's nothing to stop you using another product on top of that, but you might start to run into some redundancy. And not all farms need cover for lice, mites, and ticks at this time of year. Some of them just need to control for flies. Second consideration is, might you be using this for treatment as well? OPs and pyrethroids are typically licensed for treatment as well as prevention. So if you have an active fly strike case, you can use these to treat that sheep. In contrast, the insect growth regulator dicyclonil is used for prevention only. In fact, you may even find that flies lay eggs on sheep treated with these IGRs. The clue is in the name insect growth regulator. They prevent these eggs developing into larvae. However, they cannot kill larvae or flies themselves. Next, are you organic? This is probably a sensible consideration for any medicine, but fly products in particular, because as you know, if you are an organic producer, there are certain further rules that you have to abide by. Typically in the UK, these organic rules prohibit the use of OP dips. And organic status leads us nicely on to our next consideration, which is number four, withdrawal times. Some of these products have relatively long withdrawal times. We're looking at 40 to 50 days, whereas others go right down to about eight days. OPs and IGRs tend to be relatively long, whereas the pyrethroids are fairly diverse. Some are rather long and others are far shorter, especially products containing the active ingredient cypermethrin. This is particularly pertinent given that we're talking about a product that is often applied to growing lambs, lambs which may be finished and ready to go to the abattoir in the relatively short term. Long withdrawal periods may inadvertently hold them back, leading to them going overweight and getting over fat, which in turn leads to less grass on the farm and deductions on the kill sheet. And this is especially sensitive if you're organic, because in the UK at least, the withdrawal time for a given drug is typically twice that of the statutory, which is the legal standard withdrawal time. So if you're talking about a product like Click or Dissect, which have a withdrawal period of 40 or 49 days respectively, if you're organic, 
suddenly that goes up to 80 or 98 days respectively. That is a long time if you're talking about growing lambs. If you treated them in mid-May, that takes us well into August before we can safely send these lambs for slaughter. On some farms, that's going to be a real issue. Now, those two products are just examples. You'll find plenty of others with long withdrawals. The next consideration, number five, is how long do you need cover for. Again, that's going to vary if these are short keep versus long keep lambs or if they're lambs versus ewes. At the time of making this video, OP dip is licensed for 60 days or about nine weeks protection against blowfly. The IGRs are licensed for between eight and 19 weeks and the pyrethroids are six to 10 weeks. Although it's worth saying that some of those are only licensed for treatment and don't have any claims about protection at all. Again, it's really important to read the label before you buy anything. And if in doubt, speak to your vet. Shorter keep lambs, just as they require shorter withdrawal periods, may only need short periods of cover because they'll be gone and off the farm within a relatively short time frame. Finally, if we're talking about duration of cover, we've got to consider where you are in the country. If you are a lowland flock in mild, warm Cornwall, in a climate that's more conducive to fly strike, then you're probably going to require longer protection than someone who's running sheep in another part of the country that's colder or drier. The next consideration is cost and convenience. And there's a reason I've linked these. Cost might be worked out per dose to cover a lamb, or maybe more shrewdly, it can be worked out per day or week of cover. Because often those longer acting preparations are more expensive. But if you're having to go in and reapply these shorter acting preparations, suddenly those costs can multiply. Plus, you're probably having to spend more time gathering them up and and retreating them. And this is where convenience comes in. Whether you are treating them yourself or if you're paying a shepherd to do it, that is a time cost. Let's cost that conservatively at 10 pounds an hour. By the time you've hauled a set of pens to where the sheep are, gathered them in, collected up the strays, regathered any that have escaped, shed the ewes off from the lambs, actually treated them, let them out, put the pens back together and hauled it back home, that's often a significant investment in time and personnel when you could be doing other things, whether that is on-farm activities like looking sheep, fixing fences, thinking about the business, or off-farm activities like going and visiting other farms, or even, dare I say it, having a summer holiday. All of these things I suspect are either more enjoyable, more profitable, or both. Maybe there are people out there who just love spending time treating sheep with these products. Great, if so, knock yourself out. I'm just not sure everybody else feels the same. If you're considering OP dips, there are normally a few specific considerations related to this, related to use of yellow wormers, related to shearing, related to disposal of the dip. All of those are in the data sheet. And to save time, I'm simply going to signpost you towards the data sheet, which is in the NOAA compendium. If you've got the app, it's in there as well. In fact, all of these drugs have their own idiosyncrasies, their own quirks, and all of these can be found in the data sheet. If you can't be bothered to look at the data sheet, again, you can always ring your vet. That's what we're here for. So that is my hopefully brief overview of the different type of products available to prevent against fly strike and the different considerations you might make when choosing a product. So to recap, that was number one, spectrum of activity, number two, prevention versus treatment. Number three, organic versus conventional. Number four, withdrawal periods. Number five, duration of protection needed. And number six, cost and convenience. A quick nod to non-chemical means of control. Why do we need to worry about them? Okay, there's the cost and the hassle of treating, but most of our farmers anyway are very conscientious flock masters. They're not going to begrudge going out and doing that. They care about their sheep. They're willing to put the time and the expense in. Unfortunately, there is one drawback. These products are designed to kill flies, which are of course insects. Flies are related to other insects and these products aren't benign. They can be very harmful to other insects we care about. Bees, other pollinators, the currently very high profile and fashionable dung beetles, you name it, it could probably be affected by any of these products. That's why if you do go into the data sheet, you'll commonly see guidance requesting that sheep are kept away from water courses and similar for a while after they've been treated with these products. So to repeat, none of these products are ecologically benign. As to whether any of these products are better or worse than each other, as far as I'm aware, that is up for debate. If you know better than me, feel free to put in the comments. At a meeting I was at last year, someone suggested that actually organophosphates, the OPs, might be less harmful to dung beetles on the basis that they are excreted in the urine of the sheep 
rather than the dung. Now, I find that very interesting and plausible, but at the moment, there's still a big gap in that sort of research. And until someone fills it, it's gonna be difficult to draw any robust conclusions. One to watch for the future. Just to round off this little discussion on fly products, each of them normally has to be applied in a pretty specific way. Again, that is detailed in the data sheet. Don't assume each product is applied in the same way. In fact, many products can be applied in several different ways according to which parasite you're treating for. Don't be caught out, we see it every year, when someone's treated for flies but they've used the tick nozzle. Don't assume one size fits all. So if you don't currently use any preventative products for flies but you're thinking about it now, go and talk to your vet think about which product might be most suitable for you. If you do and you've used the same protocol for five, 10, 50 years, but you're wondering, is this the optimum? Is this the best way of doing it? Do the same. There is no harm in checking in with your vet. That is what we are here for. Okay, I think that's going to be a slightly longer than normal technical, but it's a big topic. It's an important topic. And at some point, I'm going to pick up those non-chemical means. For now, this will have to do. If you don't want to miss that video, of course, you can just press subscribe, ring the little bell next to it. That means you get notifications about new videos. Got you there. And you can leave me a comment and give the video a thumbs up. I will see you next time.